It's brew day, my favorite day of the week. Stick around while we brew up one of my favorite warm weather beers, a Kolsch. Hello everyone, Coach Chris from Wolf Moon Brewing. Today we're gonna do a full quantity boil technique on a full extract kit that I picked up from Northern Brewer. This kit is a Kolsch style beer. So let's open the kit and see what's inside. Have our instructions. Got one pound of dry malt extract, a six pound container of liquid malt extract, two packs of hops. Uh, the first one is German Herzbrucker, and the second one is German Tradition. That's it in the box. Now, the instructions are going to talk about doing a partial quantity boil and only using about two and a half gallons of water to start out. I'm going to do a full quantity boil, so I'm going to slightly change the directions that came in the kit to accommodate for that. So what we have is I have a seven gallon, uh, seven, seven and a quarter gallon boil pot here uh, that I have filled with six gallons, just a hair over six gallons of filtered water. Reason that I started with six gallons is during the process of heating the water up and boiling the water, I'm gonna lose about a gallon due to evaporation. So when we're all done, I should be really close to five gallons based on the evaporation during the entire process. So that's my goal. So that's why I started with a little bit more. Now to measure that out, I used a kind of cool technique with a calculator that I found online and I'll post that down below in the descriptions. And based on the diameter of the pot and how deep the water is, which in this case is just over 13 inches, I have just a hair over six gallons of water. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna turn the heat up on this, on my propane burner, and we're gonna get it to a boil. Since you guys don't wanna sit here and watch water boil, I'm gonna cut away and once it comes back to a boil, I'll, I'll come back. See you soon. As you can see, we're now to a boil, so we're going to turn the heat off. We're going to take the boil pot off the burner and put it onto this uh, makeshift stand that I have next to the burner. You might not be able to see it, might be a little too low. But we want to take it off the burner so that when we mix in our dry malt extract, we don't burn anything. So I'm going to turn off the heat. Heat's off. I'm going to put on some heavy duty rubber gloves that are resistant. Move that over very carefully. Remember that's five and a half, six gallons of water so it's got a little heat, uh, heft to it. We're going to take our dry malt extract, cut open the package, and slowly mix that in. You want to slowly mix it in as it's going in. You just don't want to dump it all in. Uh, because as you can see it can start to foam and boil over and it can also ball up on you and get really nasty and hard to stir in. So we're just going to let that settle a little bit, a little bit more in, mix it up. All right, we've got it all in there, all well mixed. We'll very carefully now take the pot with your heat resistant gloves again, put it back on the burner, and we're going to turn the heat back on and we're going to bring it back to a boil. As it gets closer to a boil, you're going to really want to watch this because as you can see when I put the dry malt extract in there, it started to foam up. As we add heat to this, it's going to try to do that again most likely, so we're going to want to stir it and keep an eye, and if you have a spray bottle, just some uh, filtered water in the spray bottle. As it starts to foam up, just spritz the top of it to knock the foam down and it should eliminate a boil over. Okay, so I'm gonna turn the heat back on and as it comes back to a boil, I'll be right back. Okay, it's coming back to a boil. So I'm gonna stand by and as you can see, it wants to foam up. So spritzing the top and stirring it really hot to knock that down going to turn it way down and a little bit of a boil over that's okay that's 
why I do this outside in the garage. And now it's way turned way down. And from this point forward, actually the moment you put the dry malt extract in this, you want to keep an eye on it. You can see how fast that happened uh, to boil over and started to make a little bit of a mess. So you've got to be very cautious with this. And for the entire boil, you need to watch this. Anytime you add anything to it, whether it be hops or if you're going to add additional extract like we're going to be doing in about 45 minutes, you need to watch it and make sure that it doesn't boil over. Keep that spray bottle of filtered water on hand. It really helps. So this boil requires 60 minutes. And at the beginning, the recipe calls for the German tradition hops to go in at the beginning of the boil. So now that we're at a nice boil, we're at what I call a rolling simmer, so to speak. You don't need to be go crazy. It doesn't need to be boil, boil, toil, and trouble like a witch's cauldron. So if you can see the nice rolling boil that I have here, nice calm boil, that's what you want. We're going to start our timer for 60 minutes as soon as I take these hops. And they have a little pull tab on them, so it's really easy. And the nice thing is it's going to be a full ounce that goes in. So we're just going to take the whole package, dump that in. As you can see, it starts to foam a little bit. Then keep an eye on it. Stir that in. And I've got some hop debris on my strainer, so I'm just going to rinse that off with a ladle. So I want all the hops in the beer, not on my equipment. And now we're going to start our timer. 60 minutes or one hour and in 30 minutes we're going to do our second edition which is going to be the Herzbrucker, uh, Herzbrucker uh, hops we're going to do that and then 15 minutes later we're going to add the liquid malt extract and we're also going to put our cooling coil in to sanitize that in the interim, between now and then, I'm going to take all, all my fermenting gear and everything that is going to touch this beer uh, after the boil, and I'm going to clean it with PBW, and then I'm going to set it up and get it sanitized. So during this time, is a great opportunity to do that. If you're missing any gear or if you need to gather some gear, this is the time to do it. But keep an eye on this. So you want to make sure that you're always in eye shot of this, because if it starts to boil over, you want to get to it quick. Okay. I'll break away and we'll see you when I'm at 30 minutes to do the next edition. We're just at about 30 minutes. So we're going to now take our German Herzbrucker, the whole one ounce. We're going to open that up. We're going to stand by with our spray bottle of water and our whisk. And okay, 30 minutes. That goes in, stir it up, that looks good. Now, in the next 15 minutes, we're going to finish cleaning if we haven't already and start sanitizing our fermenter and anything that is going to touch the beer, like I said before, that's going to touch the beer once the boil is done. The other thing that we're going to do is we're going to clean our cooling coil and I'll show you that in uh, a few minutes. We're also going to take our liquid malt extract. We're going to open the top. Remove the seal. This is just to make it easier later on. Just put the top back on it. And put it in a bucket of hot tap water, which this is. This hot tap water will loosen up the malt extract to make it easier to pour so that when we go to put it in in 15 minutes, we're not trying to get thick liquid out of this container. It's going to be a little more thin and pour a little easier. And we'll be back in 15 minutes. 
All right, we're just at about 15 minutes to go in the boil. So what we're going to do at this point is we're going to take the boil pot off the burner, put it onto my makeshift stand, or you can put it on the ground, whatever works for you, to add in the liquid malt extract. Again, just like when we added the dry malt extract, we don't want it to settle to the bottom very quickly and burn uh, and get out of hand. And also we can help control the boil over if one's going to occur. We're going to take our heat resistant gloves. We're going to take the pot off the heat, put it on my makeshift stand. Take our liquid malt extract. And I'm going to pour that in and stir it as it's going in. Now, because we had it in the warm water, we got most of it out just by doing this. But to help it along and to get any extra out, I'm going to take my ladle. I'm going to take some of this very hot wort. Wash it around in the can or in the container. Try to get the last little bit out of there. I don't want to throw any flavor away. I mean, you paid for it, right? It's pretty good. We got most of it out. Give it one more good stir. Throw our other glove back on. And carefully put this back on the burner to get it back to a boil for the last 15 minutes or so. Also at this point, we're going to take our cooling coil, which I just finished cleaning, and we're going to put it into the boiling liquid. Now this cooling coil, right now, will get sanitized because it's in the hot boiling liquid for the next 15 minutes. So we don't need to sanitize that as long as you put it in during the last 15 minutes to get it going. So we're going to get that back up to a boil. And then at 15 minutes, we're going to turn off the, or sorry, in 15 minutes, uh, when the full hour of the boil is done, we're going to turn off the heat and we're going to start cooling. Be right back. So as you can see, as it came back to a boil, it started to boil over. So I had the water bottle in hand and was able to keep it from boiling over. I've also left my whisk in there because I'm going to keep that sanitized because once I'm done with the boil and I start cooling, I want to be able to stir it with a sanitized piece of equipment. Just about 60 minutes of the boil is done. So at this point, as soon as my watch dings in a couple of seconds here, we're going to turn off the heat. We're going to move the pot over to my stand here, and then we're going to turn on our cooling liquid. Cooling liquid is really just connected to my outside spigot. That's all it is. It's connected to a hose. Then the, oh, here's the timer. Turn that off. Get our gloves. Move this over to there so it can start cooling. So one of these lines, actually this line here, is just connected to a hose connected to my outside spigot. This hose is connected to another hose that runs all the way to my backyard into my pool because I don't want to just waste the water. So I'm trying to be conservative there. What happens is as you run cold water through that coil, it's going to cool the liquid that is around it and cooling your beer. Or sorry, your wort. What we want to do is we want to get this down and we want to cool it as fast as we can to under 80 degrees probably closer to 70 degrees. Uh, at that point, then we can put it into our fermenter and then we can pitch our yeast and put it away for uh, the time being to let it ferment. So I'm gonna break away. I'm gonna turn on my cooling liquid and once we get down to temp, we'll be right back. It's been about 20, 25 minutes of cooling. We're down to 74 and a half degrees. So I'm gonna let it cool for a little bit longer. I just taken my hydrometer and put it in there. Uh, and I got a reading of 1.046. So I've documented that I'm at 74 and a half degrees and I'm at 1.046. Uh, 
Uh, quick math, it's probably around 10.048-ish or so, uh, given the temperature, so I have to adjust for it. If uh, you need more information about that, I have a video coming out about how to use a hydrometer. Uh, I'll link that below. As this continues to cool, I've prepped my fermentation tank. Uh, this time I'm going to be using a six and a half gallon big mouth muffler from uh, Northern Brewer. This one has a spigot at the bottom. So I've cleaned and sanitized it. It's actually there's some star sand in the bottom of it as you can see. That's all ready to go. I've also got my funnel, my strainer. They're all sitting in a bucket of sanitizer as well. So I'm going to get that all prepped and ready and we'll be right back and start transferring it from our boil pot into our fermentation tank. I've already gone ahead and taken our cooling coils and our whisk and put those in my cleaning bucket. And now what we're going to do is we're going to slowly pour this liquid into our fermentation bucket. Now we've got, as I mentioned, our big mouth bubbler with a spigot. Make sure the spigot is closed. You don't want to start pouring it in and have it run out the bottom. I've got a funnel and I have a straining basket. All have been cleaned and sanitized, uh, cleaned with PBW, rinsed off very well, and then sanitized with star sand. So we're ready to start pouring this in. Now this is heavy, so lift with your legs, do it carefully, don't hurt yourself. If you have a friend, that always helps. Now as you're pouring, be careful not to overfill your funnel. As you get closer to the bottom, you'll get more and more debris, so your strain oil will get full. So just be careful with it. All right, we got just over five gallons in the fermenting bucket or into the big mouth bubbler. We've got a little bit left in our strainer here that's still dripping through, and I'm going to let that sit while we talk. There's a little bit left in the boil pot, but that's mostly just hop debris and any other trube uh, or nasties that you. I'm not going to worry about the little bit of liquid that's in there. We still got a good quantity of, of liquid for our wort. We'll be able to pitch our yeast and have a really good beer at this point. So at this point, I'm going to help what's in here along. That's most of it. It's still dripping. And we're going to quickly put that in there. We don't need that. And now what we need to do is we need to pitch or throw our yeast into the fermenting bucket. I have, as per the recommended Y yeast that they recommended in the instructions, which is 2565 Kolsch yeast. I created a starter with this a couple of days ago, and it's been on my stir plate. And I'm just going to give it one last stir here because I've had it sitting out for the last few minutes. And we're going to throw that into, or the, the yeast, into the fermenting bucket. This is a magnet. Now, at the bottom of here, there's a magnetic stir stick, and I'm just going to attach that. So this way, the magnetic stir stick doesn't end up in my fermenting tank bucket. Pour that in. Magnetic stir stick is still in there, so we're good. We're going to take our lid that has been sitting in a bucket of star sand and put that right on top. Reach in and we're going to get our bubbler and stopper. Put that on top. Put our little cap for the bubbler in. Now with these lids, I've noticed that over time, uh, especially when they're wet with star sand like that, they don't stay very sealed. So, I found the neat little trick with these four inch spring clamps. I'll put a link below that you can pick these up and the tips rotate, as you can see. And if you put them apart from, aside from each other on the lid, it'll hold the lid down in place. We're just going to take some star sand, fill up our bubbler, all right, it's all set. Yeast has been pitched, it's down to temperature, 
We've got it sealed up. We've got our bubbler on it. Now we're going to go put this in a cool, dark place for the next two weeks. We'll keep an eye on it, make sure that it's fermenting. Uh, we'll check it with a hydrometer in a week, week and a half, just to see how it's doing. Now, since I'm using Y yeast is Kolsch yeast, wow, that's a, that's a mouthful, huh? Their directions or their recommendations are that it ferments best, I believe, if memory serves, between 55 and 65. So I've set up my area where I'm going to be keeping this at 60 degrees, so we're going to ferment this at 60 degrees. If you have an area that is not as temperature controlled and it's a little bit warmer than that, that's okay. The yeast will still work. Uh, it'll just taste slightly different, but that's just because the yeast will react differently and create different flavors at a warmer temperature. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just what it's going to be. Really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. I really hope you learned something. If you have any questions or if you just want to say hello, please go ahead and leave a comment down below. While you're down there, go ahead and smash the thumb up button for a like. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell to be notified anytime I post a new channel. Remember, homebrewing is really fun, but so is drinking responsibly. I'm Coach Chris, and we'll see you next break.